Hello and welcome to the finals of the Fist for the Dice Netrunner Store Championships taking place in February 2016. Uh, the legal sets for this tournament were up to and including Caligoda, the first data pack on the Mumbad cycle. On the left we've got Jeremy who's fought his way back through the losers brackets taking on Simon on the right here who is uh, from the, the winner of the winners brackets. Simon playing Leela and Jeremy playing his ETF. So these guys played this match up earlier on in the elimination rounds where Simon actually knocked Jeremy into the losers brackets. The game actually went to time with the two players drawing and Simon able to get one last agenda on the winning turn to just take the victory from uh, Jeremy right at the last moment. Uh, so Jeremy's got Alex Talbot installed there. So that just um, gains power counts every time you install a card and you can trash it uh, a click and trash it to get two credits for each power counter so just a nice way to accelerate your economy early games you're already getting the money for installing once per term of ETF as it is so Simon R&D interface then into R&D um, not sure what the top card was the second card there was a team sponsorship which Simon elects to leave for the time being Simon's got one click remaining. Uh, he's just going to draw a card. And pass the turn over to Jeremy. So Jeremy draws that top card. So that's the team sponsorship just gone into hand. Now. So that does mean if Simon's to run R&D now, he's got a free... Okay, he would get two new accesses, but there is a piece of ice going down there now. Simon may think it's worth uh, poking with a lot of the biroids being uh, able to click through just to get Jeremy to spend some money, yeah, he's going to do that. So running R&D. Jeremy's just thinking this one through. Uh, no res on that. Jeremy wanted to protect the Alex Tau, but... So that's a Marcus Batty. That gets trashed. And the second card is a... Executive Boot Camp, also trashed. Simon running R&D again. There's a Jackson Howard. That's going to stay on top. And that's a next silver there. Simon draws a car past the turn. Jeremy draws that Jackson Howard that was on top. He installs an upgrade into that remote. Uh, gains a click and a power count. On, uh, gains credit, sorry, and a power count onto Alex Talbot. There's a hedge fund, and will it be pop tempted to pop the Alex Talbot now? No, he's going to install another card. Presumably, that's going to be the uh, team sponsorship what we thought. Simon uh, installs a symmetrical visage. Just going to give him a credit the first time he draws each turn. Uh, second draw. So yeah, the symmetrical visage only fires on your first draw for each turn. So it is worth remembering. So it's kind of like a baby proco, I guess. So I'm just something's going to do. Ah, uh, yeah, this card's another symmetrical visage. So symmetrical visage is a unique card, so there's no no need to have two, no need to install two. Absolutely worthless and impossible to do. So it's Jeremy's option. So it looks like there's two agendas in the hand. I think I can see a GFI and another card as well. Creates a new remote. So that's the Jackson Howard. He's going to use that draw. Uh, gets the Alex Talbot counter and the credit as well. Just mind him from Simon. And further ice on HQ. So that's going to, just going to stop any sort of siphons Simon made so he wants to try and drop. So Desperado comes down. That's going to help Simon's money just keep building up even when he runs. Dirty Laundry into that middle remote, which I think is the team sponsorship it is, yeah.
So Simon doesn't really need to rush to go and trash that team sponsorship. Jeremy's not set up to score on the next turn, unless he decides to biotic something out, but I don't think that seems likely. Simon playing with Dirty Laundry. Yeah, on the team sponsorship, he's going to trash it. Gets his money back for Dirty Laundry at the end of the run. And passes a turn. So Jeremy places another ice in front of Alex Talbot. And now he is going to click and uh, trash Alex Talbot to get a nice big sum of money coming in there. That's going to take him from 11 credits up to 27. So it was 8 counters on that. <laughs> and he did forget to trash it, but yeah, there it goes. And then there's an in-store in that remote. So is that an agenda? We know we had two in hand. There is also an upgrade protecting it. So that could be an Ash, a Caprice. We also know uh, Jeremy's actually running self-destruct. Although Simon's also aware that Simon actually saw that on uh, one of his one of his runs in the last game. So self-destruct, not not a massive threat, to Simon. As long as he keeps a decent number of cards in hand. It's more threat against Faust players, which obviously at, the, uh, at this time in particular were really dominating the meta. There was a lot of wizard going around. This was a uh, Dumblefork had just, um, if I remember rightly, Dumblefork was actually the Netrunner DB deck of the week, the week going into this tournament. And all of a sudden, wizard was absolutely everywhere, running Faust and David and all the ice destruction. So Simon's running R and D, and we got a Res there, and that's a Turing. Does Simon feel that two cards are going to be worth the three clicks? No, there's a passport. Then he runs R&D. Pays one, gains one thanks to Desperado. Okay, so he saw Jackson, which he left. Still is a Project Vitruvius. Now, what will he bounce back? Yeah, bounce back the newest install in that server. So that's one of the nice things with Lila especially. I mean, her ability is just... It is a constant punishment to the court. But even better, if they're playing this sort of HB never advance, if you can get agendas from elsewhere, you can actually return stuff to hand and it just slows the court down and just keeps resetting their board state. So two installs into that server now. So there's two upgrades and we assume an agenda gone down once again. Simon can get into R&D for nothing, so he's going to be checking that for certain. Yeah, if you click one, he runs that. So that's an Alex Talbot, which he's going to trash. And the second card is a team sponsorship. Which, some, yeah, Simon's also going to trash that. Simon runs in again. There's an Architect. And a next gold... So that is a card worth just bearing in mind. Without a century breaker, next gold can be quite punishing if, if there's other next dice online. So Jeremy spending free scoring out on ABT. Uh, he's going to fire that as well. He has got the Jackson to back up any bad draws. Now we know there was an architect in there and a next gold. The other card I think might have been another Jackson Howard. I'm not entirely sure Jeremy took his mandatory draw this turn. We saw the Architect and Next Gold on top of R&D last turn during Simon's run. So, unless he happened to have a duplicate, the third card was also one of those, um, he should have drawn one of those cards into hand. I'm not quite sure, actually, there. Maybe, given the benefit of the doubt, and assume that actually the third card down could have been a duplicate of one of those, to be fair. So this is a daily cast from Simon. It passes the turn back. Install advance advance from Jeremy. He's made R&D far more difficult to run into with the architect and the next gold there. 
Uh, he's got a massive credit advantage. Simon knocks out a lot of money and only the one breaker in the hand. So Simon may have to let this go. Simon's only realistic opportunity here probably is a run on HQ. And hoping to get a piece of ice. But even there, it depends entirely what those two ice are. Um, an inside job could help. You're still only accessing one card from the hand. Simon may just have to let this one go. And that is part of the game sometimes as runners. You do sometimes have to accept that you can't get them. I mean, you can do what Simon's doing and try and put some pressure on to make the court spend some money at least. And Jeremy Rez is a Marcus 1.0. Will Simon elect to click? He's got to at least click through that trash subroutine, I would have thought. He might let the end of the run fire. So I'm just thinking through here what his choice is going to be. So much pressure in these final elimination rounds. You've been playing that runner for seven, eight hours at this point. Um, it is a long day. There's, although the the room's relatively low on attendance, and a lot of people sort of decide to go home today. This took place on a Sunday. People were travelling home, ready for work the next day. There's still, I think there was about five or six of us still watching this game. So it's been a long day. You know people are watching. There's a little bit of pressure on you. So Oaktown Grid and an Ash comes online. So I'm just not sure what his next move is. Yeah, he's just money up there, take some credits, and draw a card. So oh, that, was, that was symmetrical visage, I think, actually, yeah. You have to discard some cards as well, I think, here. Well, presumably, this isn't... I wouldn't have thought this is a GFI. I think this is probably Jeremy just double advancing, so he can get a free two out. It might even be that he wants to be able to react to whatever Lila bounces <laughs> and then to install another agenda and really push the game forward. So I'm discarding a breach... It is a GFI. Wow, that's quite ballsy from Jeremy. So that's going to allow Leela to bounce a card and uh, not give the Corp a time, a time to react to that. Uh, can Jeremy make the most of this? Or can Simon make the most of this, sorry? Certainly uh, weaken the defence on HQ. Although Jeremy might just be confident now that he, if he has got it, he could just biotic Labour out of 3-2 on the next turn. And that is game. Simon, once again, just thinking through what his next turn is going to be. He knows he's got to get this right now at this point. Jeremy has got a really decent lead on five points. Corroda comes down for barriers. A fairy comes down for sentries. And now we've got a click free account siphon. Uh, Jeremy's got no assets to res. He has got that one piece of ice. 
So it's the next silver, so that's just going to cost Simon two credits. I think it's on two subs now. Yeah, the next gold and itself. So that turns the money around a bit now. Jeremy down to two credits, Simon up to 14. Floating two tags. Here comes a legwork. This could be really big for Simon. Uh, so there's a Jackson Howard. Yeah, Simon elects to trash the Jackson. Second card is an NAPD. Simon's got to pay for that, yeah. Uh, he's got to bounce out. He's bounce. the only unraised card out in play at the moment. Shuffle up. If we can get another agenda from this access, this is massive. No, that's a... Uh, I think that was next bronze, actually. Which is the code gate option. So, Simon did manage to get a uh, one agenda out of that turn. Jeremy low on money. Simon also rarely low on money. Simon's only on four credits now. Jeremy on two credits. And even with the ash, that remote's not particularly safe now. So he does need to get some money up before he can install anything and go for that final turn agenda and end the game. It's an ice on HQ. I think Jeremy's best play here might just be money up. Yeah. Pass the turn back to Simon. Simon's with his daily cast, dripping in two credits per turn. Now Simon's options here. He's probably also really looking at just like a um, a catch-up turn. Maybe get his economy back up. Possibly progress his board state. I don't know what else he could really get down that's going to benefit him right now. A little money just so he's set to pressure that remote when Jeremy does install it. That's probably the best way forward at the minute, I'm guessing. Simon Jeremy just agreeing on the maths and uh, how much it could cost Simon if he decides he does want to go in, beat the Ash Trace and trash both of those uh, upgrades. Yeah, so Simon is going to run that. Click through the two routines. Jeremy could pump money into the ashtrays, but that's really not going to help him in this situation. So Simon pays four to break the trace. Trashes the ash. Let's the Oaktown grid sit there. The ash is the big problem. The ash is just... Oh, okay. oh. Double advance from Jeremy. So, and a hedge fund... That means Simon, Simon's got to go in this in there this turn. Can't afford to ignore that again. He also needs to make sure if he does go in, he's got the money to answer an ash. I mean, in theory, Jeremy's going to need three, uh, three credits to score out. Two to res the ash. So that leaves him with four credits he could pump into an ash trace, if that is ash, to take that to trace eight. So this is going to be hard for Simon to deal with even with a relatively low amount of money on Jeremy's side of the board and only one piece of ice which can be clicked for it might be enough to keep Simon out and just steal the game Simon, fully aware that this could be the game-winning turn, really want to make it his decisions correct. He's going to run in, click through those two subroutines, and yes, that is the Ash. 
So, yeah. Jeremy can just guarantee Simon can't get in there, and if that is an agenda, that's the game. Okay, Jeremy doesn't up the trace, which means this is probably a bluff. Yeah, that's a self destruct. Uh, Simon just reading the text on self destruct. He did see it in the previous game. Again, not really a threat to him right now. So, if last turn felt like a scoring opportunity, this feels even more like one. So Simon's on two credits. He hasn't got the daily cast giving him money at the start of turn anymore. He's not within hedge fund range. And yeah, there's an install in the remote and an install of a piece of ice. This has got to be it. Um, and I, I don't really you know what Simon's options are. I don't think there is any way to get in there realistically that I can think of right now. Simon thinking this through. I suspect Simon probably knows he can't get in there. He could try and chance it in HQ. Again, that doesn't seem great. We've got dirty laundry actually. So dirty laundry and archives. So that's going to essentially give Simon an increase of four credits. Three for the dirty laundry and another one for his desperado is that enough to get in there I suspect the answer is no so I'm going to go for it and he's got to I don't think Jeremy needs to res that does he okay so Next silver, and yeah, Simon's not going to answer for that. Um, his code get answer only works on remotes, and yeah, that's the game point. So that actually takes us to a grand final game. There, Jeremy managing to beat Simon means we, this is double elimination. That's Simon's first loss in the elimination rounds. So we are going to swap sides and have a grand final where the winner really will take all in this tournament, which we'll have very shortly. <laughs> 